Now, Russian attacks continue in Ukraine, with its forces now targeting capital Kiev again. In the latest, Kremlin fired multiple missiles into Kiev on Thursday. The attacks took place while the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres was visiting Kiev. The rockets hit the central Shevchenko district. One of them struck the lower floors of a 25-story building, and 10 people have been injured in the incident. Remember, Kremlin had pulled back its troops from the capital in early April. But the shelling highlights how Kiev remains vulnerable to Russian attacks. The latest blast happened right after Guterres wrapped up his meeting with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, who admitted that UN Security Council failed to do everything in its power to prevent and end the war. Listen in. The Security Council failed to do everything in its power to prevent and end this war. He also assured the United Nations is doing everything possible to ensure an immediate ceasefire and further reiterated the absurdity of the war in the 21st century. When uh, I see those destroyed buildings, I, I must say what I feel, I imagine my family in one of those houses that is now destroyed and black. I see my, my granddaughters running away in panic, part of the family eventually killed. Ukraine, meanwhile, lashed out against the attacks on the capital, with Ukrainian foreign minister condemning the bombing as a heinous act of barbarism by Kremlin highlighting that it once again demonstrated Russian attitude towards Ukraine, Europe and the world. Zelensky has pointed out that after the latest attacks, it has been proved that Ukrainians must not drop their guard. Russian rocket attacks on Ukraine, on Kyiv, Fastel, Odessa, Khmelnytsk and other places in the country are saying that it is not possible to relax, it is not possible to think that the war is already finished, we still need to fight, we still need to fight for the occupants. Now discussions between Zelensky and Guterres focused on evacuating Ukrainian fighters and civilians holed up in a steel plant in Mariupol. On Tuesday, Putin had agreed to the involvement of the UN and Red Cross to evacuate the plant. Ukrainian officials worry that Russia wants to capture those trapped inside. However, Russia has denied this allegation. Meanwhile, United States President Joe Biden has asked Congress for a $33 billion support to Kiev. This is a massive jump in funding, which includes over $20 billion of weapons, ammunition and other military aid. The package intends to cover the needs through September. I just uh, signed a request to Congress for critical security, economic and humanitarian assistance uh, to help uh, Ukraine continue to counter Putin's aggression and uh, at a very pivotal moment. We need this bill to support Ukraine in this fight for freedom and uh, our NATO allies, our EU partners, they're going to pay their fair share of the cost as well. But we have to do this. We have to do our part as well, leading the alliance. <clears throat> the cost of this fight uh, it's not cheap, but caving to aggression is going to be more costly if we allow it to happen. Now, as the United States and Europe increasingly heed Zelensky's call for heavier firepower, Moscow continues to target West-supplied arms in Ukraine. Russia's defense ministry said that its troops has fired missiles at six arms and fuel depots in Ukraine and destroyed them, and stated that Russian forces had hit 76 Ukrainian military facilities in total.